My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Glamma. Oh, I love you too, Glamma girls. Hi everyone, Glamma here. Welcome back to Made with Love by Glamma, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love, one stitch at a time. Today we're going to be making this sunglasses case right here that I gave you a sneak peek of last week. It was my daughter's idea. She says, well, you should make sunglasses, a sunglasses case. And I'm like, ooh, that is a good idea. And then I came up with this little design here. So this video is going to be in two parts. We're going to make our sunglass case first. And then the second part will be for the actual flower, the daisy. And I'm using yellow and white yarn again, even though I already have a yellow case but my sister is visiting um, Texas and so her favorite color is yellow so I thought I would make her one as well and we can have matching sunglasses cases and also I made her a uh, book cover my very first tutorial was a crocheted book cover and I made her book cover in yellow with a white daisy in the corner so this will match yay <laughs> Alrighty guys, so okay, I'm gonna let you know what we need to get started for this project. I'm using yellow and white Red Heart Super Saver yarn, a 5.50 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to leave a little bit of a tail. I don't need a long tail because I'm not going to weave it in. I'm just going to work it in with my project. Let's make a slip knot. Okay. And let's chain 12. 11 and 12. And I'm going to do something that's kind of unconventional. Normally we start in the second chain from the hook, but I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to put a um, half double crochet into that very first chain from our hook. Okay, so there's one. And I'm going to put a second one into there as well. Alright. And I'm going to put a stitch marker on that very first half double crochet that I made so that I know that that's the beginning of my row okay or of my round because we're going to be working in the round we're not going to be chaining up to the next round or anything we're just going to work in a spiral and when we come back around we're going to work our way this way and when we come back around we're going to put one more half double crochet into that same stitch so that that very first one is in the middle of these two okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put one half double crochet into each of the chains till i get to the other end Okay, and I'm grabbing both strands of the chain here. You don't have to if you don't want to, but that's how I'm doing it. And I'm just going to make half double crochets all the way to the end, and I'll meet you at the end, okay? Okay, so here's my very last chain, and I'm going to put three half double crochets into that one. There's one and two, and I'm going to work that tail in as it gets in my way <laughs> okay so there's the third one hope I was in the shot and now what we're going to do is we're going to work on this side of our work and that loop that we left when we were working on the chain this way we left one little loop we're going to work into each of those loops and put one half double crochet till we get back to this end okay and I'm working my tail in like I said one, oops, and there's two, and you're just going to work your way all the way down till you get to the other end, okay? All right, I'll see you at this end. Okay, so I'm almost at the end. Okay, and this is 
the little loop right here where we put the first two half double crochets. So I'm going to put one more in there. Okay. And now I'm not going to slip stitch into that and, and go up to my next round. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put another half double crochet into there because we're just going to be working in a spiral. Okay. But what I am going to do is I'm going to put my stitch marker on that stitch now so that I know that I am on row two. And you don't have to keep track of rows if you don't want to. Just make your sunglass case as long as you need it for as big as your sunglasses are. But I think I made 16 rows on mine. So if you want to make the exact same amount as me, you might want to count your rows. So that's row two. So just move up your stitch marker each time that you make another um, stitch into that stitch right there. And now I am just grabbing each of these stitches from the previous row and just making half double crochets. And I'm using both sides of the V, see this side and that side. Okay. And I want to answer a question that I've gotten from one particular viewer each time. Do you see how my work is starting to fold inward? And she says, why am I always working on the inside of my rounds? Well, it's super, super easy. All you do is just push it this way and now you're working on the outside. It's just a matter of how it tends to want to curl in, but this is actually the outside of our work. So we want to push it in like this and now you're working on the outside. All right, so it's as simple as that. So now let's just continue on making half double crochets into each of these stitches from the previous row. I'm going to do this one round with you and then I'm going to let you just have at it because <laughs> it's super, super easy. Okay, see how it's wanting to curl in? All you got to do is push it out and now you're working on the outside of your round or on the right side. <laughs> I used to um, get confused about that too. I was like, why is my work, why am I working on the inside and the person's tutorial that I'm watching, she's working on the outside. Well, it's just as simple as just flipping it in. <laughs> just turning it. All right, we're almost there. And this is all you're going to do when you get to the stitch with the stitch marker. Just half double crochet into that. Move your stitch marker up. And now you know you're on round three. Okay, so meet me back here when you are a few stitches before reaching um, the end of round 16. Okay, so that's it guys. Super easy as that. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm nearing the end of round six and I wanted to show you something that might baffle you guys a little bit because I know it always baffled me a little bit and I should have mentioned it when I first told you about moving the stitch marker up. But do you remember on our very first and second rows, the stitch marker was way over here. When you work in a spiral, for some reason, even though you're stitching into the stitch with the stitch marker and moving it right up, that particular stitch ends up more and more over here. It should be over here, but because we're working in a spiral, you can see that the stitches kind of do go a little bit at a diagonal, see? Like that. So it starts to, the stitch marker, by the time we were done with our 16th row, it probably would have ended up over here. So I want to show you what I have found. I haven't been doing it for these rows, but I want to show you how to avoid that. Um, in the future. You just stitch into the stitch with the stitch marker and then instead of moving it right up to that one, <clears throat> what I have found that works for me is going into the next stitch and then putting the stitch marker there. So I obviously haven't been doing that or else my stitch marker would be where it should be. So for now I'm just going to move my stitch marker to this stitch 
Okay, which is where it probably would be had I been doing that little trick that I just showed you all along. See, so there's the stitch with the stitch marker. Now, normally you would move it up to this one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch into the next one and then move it up and put it there, okay? That way um, it stays on the end and doesn't move at a diagonal along with the rest of it. Okay, so I'm nearing the end of my 16th row here and I've got one more stitch to go before getting to the stitch marker. So what I'm going to do, since we're working in the round, we don't wanna just stop um, right here where the stitch marker is because it would look like that. It would look like a huge step down. So I always um, kind of start gradually making my stitches smaller. So instead of a half double crochet, I'm going to make a single crochet. See, and it makes it a little shorter now. And then in the stitch with the stitch marker, I'm going to make a slip stitch, okay? So if we wanted to end it there, it makes it a nice smooth transition. And now I just eyeballed it on mine. <clears throat> just fold your sunglass case over, decide where you want to put your closure right there. So I'm going to go probably to about right here. So I'm going to slip stitch all the way to there. <clears throat> make my way over there. Okay, and I'll slip stitch right into that stitch with the stitch marker. And I'm gonna chain 25 chains because that was perfect to go around my flower. Um, one, two, And 25. Okay, try not to twist it. Slip stitch right back into that space. Okay. Right there, like that. And there's your closure. Okay. And so what I did, since I had slip stitches up along here, I went ahead and slip stitched all the way around it till I got to the first slip stitch. And you can kind of tell where your first slip stitch is. Mine is right, let me see. Yeah, it's right there. So I'm gonna slip stitch all the way till I get over here. If you want, you can put a stitch marker. If not, you don't have to. That's gonna be my last slip stitch right there. Okay, so just slip stitch all the way around just to give it a nicer finishing edge. All right, and I think I'm actually going to slip stitch into the next one again, just to make it a more smooth transition. Slip stitch into that. To end your work, just chain one. And get your scissors, leave yourself a bit of a tail so that you have room to weave it in. Okay, and then just pull that through, snug that down, and you see how you can't tell that we worked in a spiral. There's no big step down, it's a gradual decline. Okay, so now just get your tapestry needle and weave that in there in the inside. So here's the case. I wove in the tail, and just to show you how it fits, fits nicely and then we're going to make a closure but this doesn't just have to be for sunglasses they can be for regular glasses too for those of y'all that want to make another one for regular glasses here are my glasses and they fit nicely in there as well but yeah doesn't have to be just for sunglasses alrighty so um we are going to get started with our daisy now. All right. 
Okay, so to make this daisy right here, it's super, super easy. You'll be amazed. I'm going to leave a bit of a tail because I'm going to use this to actually sew the center of the daisy onto this sunglass case here. So I'm going to make a magic ring. Okay, so now that we have our magic ring, I'm going to make one more chain and I'm going to put 12 double crochets into this magic ring, okay? And that chain right there, I'm not going to count as a uh, double crochet. So anyway, go ahead and make um, your 12 double crochets into there. So you'll have 12 double crochets and a chain and I will meet you back here, okay? Okay, so I've got my 12 double crochets and now I'm going to tug on that tail and close it up. Okay, like that. That looks good. And now I'm going to grab my white yarn because we're going to switch colors. So right here, that very first double crochet, we're going to slip our hook into there, but we're gonna drop our yellow color and we're going to pick up our white and we're gonna pull that through as a slip stitch. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my yellow yarn because I don't need that anymore. Okay, we're done with that for the day. And now I am going to tie the two tails together, the yellow and the white. I'm going to work both of those tails in as I go for a little bit here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to, let me tug on that white a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to chain 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, get some more yarn, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now I am going to grab these two tails and try to incorporate them. Okay. And I'm going to go right back into that same place where I chained and grab those tails and I'm going to slip stitch right there okay and that's one petal and now still holding on to those tails I'm going to slip stitch into the next one incorporating those tails slip stitch okay and I'm going to chain 10 one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go right back into that same stitch, hold on to my tails, and slip stitch. And just keep doing that. Now you've got two petals. Just do that all the way around, and I'll meet you back here. <laughs> Once your tails have been incorporated for a few stitches, you can just stop and either cut it or just let them hang down. And then you can cut it later, okay? All right, I'll see you on the other end. Okay, so I just finished my 11th petal and I've got one more petal to go. So let me, I just slip stitched into there and I'm going to slip stitch into the next and final chain. And I'm going to chain up 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now I'm going to slip stitch right back into there. Okay. And now to end it, I am going to slip stitch right back where I started over here under that first petal. Okay, and now I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail as well on this. It's not 
too much. Not as big as on the yellow one because we're not going to use the white to sew in. I'm just going to use the white to tie the yellow tail with inside the sunglass case. So there's our sunflower. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is determine, I think I went down the center of the flowers about one, two, three, four, five, about five rows down, one, two, three, four, five. Determine where you want yours. See, I didn't want mine going past like that. You can if you want. If you want yours in the center, you would have to make a longer chain, but I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, put the center of my flower right around there. Okay, and so what I did is um, I pushed the yarn through from the yellow tail. I pushed it through. You can either do it with a crochet hook or you can just do it with your hands like I'm doing. Just bring that tail in. I did the same thing with the white one. Just push that in. Okay, and grab it like that. And so what I did, let me make sure, make sure you have your flower centered how you want it, because once you tie it, that's pretty much it. It's where it's going to be. So what I did is I went ahead and tied this, tied them together. And I just let the white hang for a second because we're going to use that again in a minute. Now get your tapestry needle and uh, thread the yellow yarn through. And this is how I sewed my flower on. I wanted to stitch it all the way around here so that this would have something nice to kind of sit on when you, when you go around your flower. So what I did is I came up through one of these spaces right here. So I'm going to stitch in and out, in and out through here and end up over here. And the reason why I want to end over here is so that I can then tie the white tail and the leftover of the yellow tail together just to, you know, further reinforce my flower. Okay, so I'm going to go in through here, come out through here, and I'm just going to stitch my flower in place. And that's it, guys. Super duper easy. All right, so I'm going to stitch all the way around. I'll meet you when I'm on this end, okay? All righty. Okay, so I'm over here near the end now. And I'm going to go in through here. And then I'm going to go right back in because I want to end up on the inside over here close to the white. See, and I'm really close to the white. <laughs> All right. So now that we've done that, you can, I guess I didn't have to unthread my tapestry needle. But basically, just tie these two together again. I'm going to make these even. And I'm going to re-thread <clears throat> my tapestry needle with both of them. Okay. And I'm just going to weave this in and out. I'm going to make a little knot first with them. And that's it guys. It's as simple as that. Now just cut your yarn and you are finished. Straighten out your flower and that's it. You have a sunglass case. Yay! <laughs> or whatever you're putting your, flower, your daisy flower on. But this is how it would work. You would take your closure and close it over this. But let me put my glasses in there so you can see the finished product. Pull your little closure and just bring these petals through here as so. And that is it. Voila. <laughs> 
So yeah, there it is. There's your sunglass case. Adorable. <laughs> I love it. I think it's fantastic. Alrighty guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, don't forget to meet me back here next week. I'll have another tutorial for you. I don't know what it will be yet, but I'm sure I'll give you a little sneak peek of it um, at the beginning or maybe at the end of this week when I decide what I want to make. Um, and I will let you know. So one of these will be for me and one will be for my sister and we have matching sunglass or eyeglass cases. Alrighty guys, don't forget how much I love you. Don't forget to love yourselves and everyone you come in contact with. Alrighty guys, bye! Mwah. Thank, Thank you for, for watching, watching our Glamos channel. channel.